All right, guys, a lot has happened this week. Today, we're going to go through Nexo, Voyager, and Celsius. Specifically, if you're still in Nexo, I'm not sure why you're still in Nexo. You got to get out immediately. And we'll go through why in this video. For Voyager, there's some big things happening in Voyager because FTX had bid for Voyager assets, right? And from what it looks like, it's not entirely good for Voyager creditors. We're also going to take a look at that. And we're going to recap today what happened with the UCC Town Hall for Celsius and that Celsius is now looking for the same out that Voyager took. That is that now they're now taking bids according to the latest filings for their assets as well. So let's get right into it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. And once we've got that done, let's jump in. All right, guys, don't forget that there are timestamps in the description below. So if you're not interested in Nexo or you're only interested in Celsius or Voyager, please use those timestamps to jump to the part that you're interested in. But latest news that happened this week, California and New York joined several states ordering crypto lender Nexo to halt yield products. So California, New York, and six other states, that makes eight states, are suing Nexo for offering unregistered securities in the form of accounts that pay interest for cryptocurrency deposits. Nexo violated the laws and investors' trust by falsely claiming that it is a licensed and registered platform, said New York Attorney General Leticia James, who is demanding the company give up the revenue from its earned interest products, accounts, and provide restitution to customers. So on top of New York and California, the other states include Washington, Maryland, Kentucky, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Vermont. They all filed individual actions targeting certain yield producing accounts at Nexo. And yet I now remind you that this is exactly what happened to both Celsius and BlockFi. Regulators were on their butts before they went into bankruptcy, before they froze accounts. So this is a good hint that Nexo right now is not safe. So Dirty Bubble Media wrote a great article, Is Nexo Nexto? And they said the same thing. They noticed that the eight states filed emergency cease and desist orders, but the regulators also made a shocking claim according to them. The only assets that stand between Nexo and insolvency is the proprietary token Nexo. So this is exactly the same case as Celsius. And we all know where Celsius ended up. The thing about Nexo is that unlike Celsius, which is based in US, Nexo is founded in Bulgaria. The crypto community considers it one of the most financially responsible crypto lending firms. And they were offering an earned product. But what's weird is that in February of this year, Nexo announced that they would no longer offer earned products to new US users due to concerns about US securities violation. This is exactly what happened in the US for Celsius, which started the custody accounts, right? So the exact same play is happening out right now. According to cease and desist orders from Kentucky regulators, Nexo even failed to register to do business in the state of Kentucky. The cease and desist states that Nexo is a conglomerate of several entities which primarily do business through Nexo Capital Inc., a Cayman Islands-based corporation. So what that means is if they go bankrupt, it's going to be messy because they're not in the US and laws with other countries is going to be a big mess. That is what we're seeing with 3AC, right? So that's what you're dealing with if you're in Nexo. If they go bankrupt, it's going to be a big headache. So the Kentucky C&D contains a critical assertion based on an investigation by the state regulators. As of July 31st, 2022, Nexo Capital held 952 million in Nexo tokens, comprising 95.9% .9 of all tokens in existence. That is centralized to the T and valued those tokens as $682 million. Excluding Nexo Capital's net position in Nexo, Nexo's capital liabilities would exceed its assets. That means that they're basically I assume they're buffering up their balance sheet with this Nexo token, which is exactly what Celsius did, but not knowing, other people may not know that this Nexo token might be completely worthless. If it's worth zero, then basically Nexo Capital is underwater right now. And they go on to show that the major addresses holding Nexo are directly linked back to the company. So that is not good at all. This is nearly identical situation to Celsius Network, and we all know where Celsius ended up. They also say that Nexo token is even more illiquid than the bankrupt Celsius Network's sell token. And illiquidity is bad because basically, if they needed to sell the Nexo token to make money to raise liquidity, they'd find no buyers. That's why we call this token basically worthless. And another thing, the highly questionable Mexi Global Exchange claims to host the largest trading pair of Nexo. We have previously shown that Mexi has multiple ties to a network of fraudulent crypto exchanges registered by a shady Colorado firm. 
And guys, here's the thing. Mexi has been hitting me up for promotional requests for the longest time. This is email after email after email. So I just put them to spam because they always felt a little weird. This explains it. So guys, right now is the best time to say that if you guys are moving your Nexo, your tokens out of Nexo, where are you moving to? The best place is in your ledger, right? So I keep all my crypto in cold storage and that is the ledger. You can get this in the link below. With your ledger comes with a secret passphrase. You want to keep that safe. I keep that in Apricorn. This is a military grade USB. It has a pin pad in it, so only you who knows what the pin is can access the files in that USB. So I keep my files, my keys, everything in here, and I'm the only one that knows the pin pad, so I'm the only one that can access it. That's the safest way. You can find both the Apricorn and the Ledger in the pin comments below. So after this video, go ahead and do that and move everything from Nexo off to your Ledger immediately. So now we're going to shift gears and we're going to take a look and recap the Celsius Town Hall. You can see that it's a two-hour recording. I'm going to cut through the drama, the emotion emotions and get to the points that you really need to know. So behind all the drama, the crying, the emotions, here's what you really need to know. So Celsius really has runway till the end of the year and I'm talking about money. They have money to keep them going till the end of the year and the UCC is in a place where they have basically their tentacles, their fingers into every aspect, every corner of the business, which is what we want, which is great. Keith from White and Case noted that the plan right now is to actually get a reorganization plan going or do a platform sale of the assets, which would turn all the accounts in Celsius over to a new entity, which could be something like FTX or Binance or whoever does this, does the bidding and the buying. So that's what happened with Voyager and FTX. The platform sale of the accounts, they turned over to FTX because FTX won the submitting bid. But what they're really focused on right now is making a plan of reorganization that they can propose to the court. They noted that people of a like kind will be treated the same. So my understanding of that is that if you're in custody, if you're an earn, if you're a borrower, what you're you're going to be it's you're going to be placed into buckets and you're going to be treated the same way as the other earn accounts in that same bucket if you're an earn holder and vice versa if you're a borrower or you're a custody holder now when they propose a plan each creditor will get to vote to let go for the plan or not go for the plan so when that happens when the voting happens i will let you know so make sure to subscribe to this channel for further updates note that two-thirds of the creditors in that specific group in that specific bucket has to approve for that plan to go through that means that every single bucket two-thirds of those creditors have to approve for the plan to go forward after approval if the court confirms it then that plan is placed into motion celsius has 120 days to file a plan that's what they mean when they use the word 120 days that's what they're talking about and apparently that day is november 10th until then nobody else other than celsius can propose an alternative plan now the ucc is focused on getting creditors back their crypto they don't want fiat so that's a really great news because all of us who are in this game right now, we're in this game because we don't like fiat. We want the crypto back. So we did hear last week, and if you check out my last video, that equity investors, that means that they are shareholders, are looking to be placed first in line when it comes to recovery, which makes no sense to me because as an equity holder, you are an owner. When does it ever say, when does it ever say that an owner should eat first, right? You're an owner, you invested in this, you should be last in line. Creditors should be first. That's how I believe it works. And the UCC agrees with that. The equity investors think that the UCC should represent them, but the UCC disagrees. The UCC believes that it is right for them to represent the retail investors because as equity, you're supposed to be a sophisticated investor and not do stupid stuff like invest in Celsius. As retail, we have an excuse. So if you lose money, huh, that's bad on you. Now the Tether loan on another case is very high priority for the UCC. They're taking a look into it because if they can get money back from that Tether loan or do clawbacks or whatever, then that's going to be huge for creditors. So in other news, the US trustee had just filed an objection to both the sale of stable coins, which I agree with, and the release of custody. So there is a whole big thing that happened here on the UCC town hall that I really recommend you listen to because one of the custody holders really came on the town hall and threw a fit and what in case was trying to explain the reason why. So if you want the explanation, it's a very long explanation. I'm not going to get into it. So please go watch the UCC town hall. But that town hall goes through why they are rejecting the release of custody. So that's the situation with that right now. My thoughts on that is that if you are a custody account holder, completely agree with you that you should get your money. But you know, when you buy into the procedure of letting a centralized entity hold your coins for you, this is what you opt into, which is why you guys should definitely get the ledger if you haven't get one. Use the pin 
comment below, right? But I agree with the UC. If you put yourself in this position where you're playing the centralized game, you're gonna have to follow the centralized loot rules of going through legal proceedings, which is what White in case is going through now. Completely understand the guy who threw a hissy fit over this, but you know it is what it is. If you don't want to go through that, then get a ledger and put all your crypto in there. And if you're gonna use the excuse of I don't know how to use the ledger, then I made a video for you right here, so you really have no excuse to learn to use the ledger, which is crucial when it comes to understanding and using cryptos for the future. Following extensive dialogue with UCC, Celsius has filed procedures for investors and buyers to submit bids for the company's business. Court hearing is 1020, and we're going to continue to evaluate how Celsius may reorganize itself on its own without external partners. So that is the thing now. Celsius is now looking for bids for people to take over its business. So it looks like there's not going to be any Celsius 2.0 or anything like that anymore. So this is news that I don't really want to report about Voyager, but you know, it's not exactly good news. It's pretty bad news actually, but I want to be unbiased and want to give you the real facts. That's what this channel is here for. And if you don't want to hear it, you can click it off. We don't know how much of a haircut that creditors are going to get yet, right? So that is still information that we do not know. But here, based on this article, Voyager's auction did not serve depositors' best interest, alleges Wave financial rep. So what happened was a spokesperson argued that better bids were on the table, but they were passed over for strictly cash offers when it came to Voyager picking bids, right? FTX secured the winning bid with an amount of $1.4 billion, which must now be approved by the U.S. Bankruptcy Court. Wave defended its proposal as the only one seeking to maintain the Voyager brand and create a new exchange model that caters to the crypto community, regardless of the financial difference in the bid. So Wave's proposal sought to restore value to the VGX token by a new improved utility, saving $200 million worth of funds and redistributed assets back to existing Voyager customers, and extend a revenue share program to depositors through the new exchange model driven by the liquidity and community of leading layer one protocols who joined as investors and minority owners. So that on the surface sounds really good, but Simon Dixon has a different thought. So Simon Dixon said that the hole was smaller for Voyager than Celsius, right? A cash bid goes further. They didn't need financial innovation in this case, but for Celsius Network, the chance of a cash bid filling a two to three billion dollar hole is out of the question. It makes no business sense. So Wave proposal was to restore value in the VGX token via new and improved utility, saving two hundred million dollars worth of funds and redistributing assets back to existing Voyager customers. All sound great and good, but a utility token based on that proposal is gonna force a regulatory position because regulators don't like that. They already see the VGX token as a security, right? So that hinders the process of getting out of Chapter Eleven. So it's the exact opposite of what regulators want, and then it gets political. So with that said, at this point, FTX provided limited information regarding how Voyager customers will be able to access their crypto holdings. So here's what's crazy about this whole deal. So for Voyager customers, it looks like what they're planning is that for Voyager customers to get some of their money back, they will have to migrate to FTX's platform and then they would receive a pro beta distribution of Voyager assets based on their portion of Voyager's overall holdings. So FTX bid, if approved by creditors, would transfer Voyager's loan balances, excluding the 3AC loan, which was not part of the deal, to FTX and by extension to Sam Bankman Free. So guys, it's a huge chess game and FTX is winning because they were hunting BlockFi and they hunted them successfully. They were hunting Voyager and they hunted them successfully. Now they're hunting Celsius, right? Because when they buy the creditor's assets, Voyager assets, at these depressed prices, who they're going to win for eventually is their shareholder. Voyager creditors will get nothing because the outcome, what they're going to pay is going to go to fees like lawyer fees, investment banker fees, accountants, and etc. So what's going to be left for creditors is likely going to be minuscule. And that is why Simon Dixon was really pushing for Voyagers to go tell their UCC that they want FTX equity along with their game because FTX is winning this for their shareholders. If Voyager creditors also get FTX equity, they they become shareholders too. So they get the profit from this deal that FTX is making. So from what I understand, Voyager UCC is taking this deal without FTX giving equity to their creditor, which means this really screws over Voyager creditors from what I understand. Because what happens is that the Voyager creditors get the scraps after the fees, whereas FTX, they now own your assets and that asset is gonna 10X, 100X for their shareholders in the next bull market. So Celsius is looking to do the same auction process right now and FTX is trying to replay the same playbook that they just did with Voyager on Celsius. If they managed to do that, then FTX basically won the whole game. They really stole from retail because 
they won with block five they won with voyager and if they win with celsius then they basically stole all the crypto that retail has spent years building or like the last two or three years building they just stole them from right under their nose and that's the way that all the creditors will get rugged in the process is how i understand so that's all i got for this week's video it's a huge recap on what happened with nexo voyager and celsius and if you enjoy this sort of recap and you want more of this then please smash the like button smash the subscribe button check out our other videos on cryptocurrencies and passive income and don't forget guys continue working continue building continue inspiring i'll see you next time